good day everybody welcome to my new course on storage tank piping stress analysis using scissor 2 software so in this course we will be learning the stress analysis methodology of piping systems connected to storage tanks as you can see that there is a big storage tank and from which several piping parts are connected through the equipment nozzle or tank nozzles so in this course we will be learning all the steps which are required for performing pipe stress analysis connected to storage tanks in this course i will be covering the following points first is introduction then what are storage tanks so what equipments are known as storage tanks then there are various type of so storage tanks so we will be learning what are those types then how does a storage tank differs from a pressure vessel so storage tank as well as pressure vessel both are static equipments but there are certain differences between these two so we will be learning that what are those differences or what are the major differences that makes storage tank piping stress analysis quite different from the pressure vessel connected piping system stress analysis next we will learn why is storage tank piping critical means why do we believe or what why piping stress engineers consider storage tank piping connected systems as critical and because of that only we perform stress analysis as the lines connected to storage tanks are critical then what is tank settlement then what is tank bulging so these are the terms we will be explaining that what is the definition of settlement how to consider the tank settlement during analysis then what is the definition of tank bulging and how we have to consider this tank bulging in our analysis to get accurate or proper results then towards the end we will be checking a actual scissor to case study of tank piping stress analysis so let's see the introduction part of the storage tanks storage tanks are one of the most important equipment for storing large amount of fluids we all know that storage tanks are essential in every plant to store or wherever it is required to store a large amount of fluids mainly liquids and we all know that these storage tanks are required for various purposes let's take an example that from sea you are taking or shipping or transporting crude oil from some other countries and then you have to process those crude oils to generate different products but before processing we have to store the, those fluid and here storage tanks tanks comes into picture so they store as you see in this image that there are so many tanks which stores different different liquids maybe crude oil maybe water so various types of liquid it stores then tanks store flammable liquids toxic liquids water or any other liquid so whatever may be the type of the liquid it can store and mainly the pressure is atmospheric pressure so similar to pressure vessels no high pressure is applied for these tanks now a group of tank together is called tank farms here in this example image you can see this is an example of a tank farm because a group of tanks are there petroleum and water industries are the largest users of storage tanks so water industry as well as petroleum or oil and gas industry they use a large number of storage tanks for storing purposes now what is a storage tank a storage tank is a piece of static equipment 
that is used to store products mainly in liquid form in atmospheric pressure condition. So this is a static equipment, a piece of static equipment. What are other static equipments we know? That pressure vessels like heat exchangers, columns, towers, reboilers. So all those are in the group of pressure vessels. And those are also static equipment as there is no moving part. In a similar way, storage tank is also a static equipment as there is no moving part in it, but that it is quite different from pressure vessels. Those differences we will be studying later. As there is no moving part, storage tanks are called a static or stationary equipment similar to other static types of equipment like pressure vessels, heat exchanger, columns, towers, etc. They are widely used. So what are the applications of these storage tanks? They are used in refinery and petrochemical plants to store crude oil or processed fluid. Then fertilizer plants, oil and gas plants, chemical industries to store various chemicals and water industries to store water. Storage tanks usually have three main components. Every tank usually have three main components. So what are those components? First is tank cell, then tank bottom plate and tank roof. In this image, you can see that the bottom part is known as tank bottom plate. This part with which the storage tank is made, the outer part or outer boundary part is known as tank cell and at the top, there will be roof. They are usually manufactured with the following materials. In general, storage tanks are made of carbon steel, stainless steel, duplex stainless steel. Even sometimes it may be from other materials also. Now, tank cell, a cylindrical portion that is resting on the bottom plate and covered by the roof. So, definition of tank cell is that it is a cylindrical portion that rests over the bottom plate and covered by the roof. Then what is tank bottom plate? A welded flat bottom plate that is placed beneath the cylindrical cell that is known as tank bottom plate. The roof of the tank, it can be fixed roof or floating roof. The fixed roof is mostly provided with a conical roof top and large diameter conical roof tanks are supported by roof structures or columns and the open top tank is mostly provided with a floating roof. So this roof what you can see here this is a conical one. It may be fixed roof as well as floating roof. There are two types of roofs. Now types of storage tanks. What are the main types of storage tanks that are used in refinery or chemical complexes or widely used? So storage tanks for oil and gas applications are usually classified as follows. First is cone roof storage tank, then open top floating roof storage tank, internal floating roof, slash covered floating roof storage tank. So what is cone roof storage tank? A cone roof storage tank has vertical sides and is equipped with a fixed cone shaped roof that is welded to the sides of the tank. So in this example, you can see this is a cone roof storage tank. You see that conical shape of the top and these are welded near these locations to the side of the tank. These are the tank sides. So this is welded on the side. Then open top floating roof storage tanks. An open top floating roof storage tank is similar to the cone roof tank in construction, but with the exception that it has no fixed roof. So floating roof does not have a fixed roof. It may float. So depending on the whatever is product in inside, it will be simply floating on top of the fluid or liquid. 
So as the amount of liquid increases, the height of that or position of that roof also increases or decreases. So this is an example of floating roof. You see up to this much fluid is there. So roof is now here. Now when it will be filled with the complete liquid, so it will be reaching up to this position. So this is a floating roof type storage tank. So there is no fixed roof in this case. A pontoon type roof floats directly on the flammable liquid surface. Then internal floating roof or covered floating roof storage tank. An internal floating roof or covered floating roof storage tank is a combination of both the cone roof or dome and the open top floating roof tank. The tank has a cone roof but with the addition of an internal floating roof or pan that floats directly on the fuel surface. So this is the example of internal floating roof or covered floating roof uh, storage tank where this red part which is showing this is the cover. So from top it is covered but in case of open top this cover will not be present only it will be floating over the liquid and depending on the amount of fluid or liquid that is there inside the storage tank the position of this roof will also be varying now what are the main differences between a storage tank and pressure vessel from the start of this course itself I was saying that there are some differences between a storage tank and pressure vessel and the first or major difference is that pressure vessel means this will be with certain pressure whereas storage tanks are designed at atmospheric pressure. So pressure vessel contains gases or liquids at high pressure whereas storage tanks holds liquids or gases at atmospheric pressure or low pressure. There are tanks which are pressurized uh, that is designed based on API 620 which is not under the purview of this course. In this course we will be mainly uh, studying about API 650 tanks which are atmospheric storage tanks welded type. Now operating under high pressure that is above atmospheric pressure is the main characteristics of every type of pressure vessel. So all pressure vessels will be having a pressure more than atmospheric pressure. Whereas storage tanks operate at or near atmospheric pressure or low pressure. Next difference is pressure vessels are engineered and designed to withstand significant internal pressure. Whereas this design of storage tanks focuses on storing and retaining the fluids with minimal pressure resistance. Pressure vessels are utilized in various industries like chemical, petrochemical, power generation, mineral, food, pharmaceutical, etc. Storage tanks are commonly used in storage application to store fuel, water, crude oil, etc. These are also mainly in oil and gas industries, chemical, water industries, etc. The design of pressure vessels requires rigorous stress analysis and design calculations. Also, these pressure vessels need rigorous stress analysis because this will be pressurized items. Whereas storage tanks generally has less complex stress analysis and design requirements as compared to pressure vessels. Then pressure vessels usually has thicker walls to handle high pressure. So as the internal press design pressure of the pressure vessels are high, the thickness automatically becomes higher or thicker uh, as you already know that uh, normally as we uh, calculate the thickness of pipe using the formula PD by 2 into SW plus POI where P is a parameter means pressure is a parameter and with increases in pressure the thickness increases. Same way for pressure vessels also there are equations which is dependent on pressure and with increase in pressure uh, the thickness of the pressure vessels also will increase. But in case of storage tanks, in most of the situations, they have thinner walls due to lower pressure requirements. 
then safety relegation of pressure vessels is subjected to strict requirements and codes so the design of pressure vessels are performed with strict requirements of various codes mainly asme section 8 division 1 and 2 based on the design or requirement whereas the storage tank follows safety regulations but usually has fewer requirements as compared to uh, pressure vessels the requirements are usually less now most pressure vessels require pressure relief devices to prevent over pressure so that the pressure vessel does not become over pressurized relief system is designed along with pressure vessel whereas storage tanks are usually equipped with only vents not pressure vessels or not pressure relief devices for pressure equalization and pressure vessels can be mobile or stationary depending on the application Typically, storage tanks are stationary and are not designed for mobility. And in general, the size of the pressure vessels are usually diameter is very less as compared to storage tanks. But storage, the diameter of storage tanks are huge. It may be 60 meter or 70 meter uh, in diameter, uh, whereas pressure vessels are normally not found in that high diameter category. And also, uh, the fluid inside the pressure vessel is usually processed or high temperature fluids whereas the storage tank only stores the fluid it does not process anything inside it hope the difference between storage tank and pressure vessel is clear now so thank you for this introduction module of this course now we will be moving to our next module